Last episode, we joined our heroes as they began asking more and more questions to the amulet, learning more than they possibly wanted and needed to know. They passed out after all of this and awoke the next morning to the sound of explosions and a crowd at the dock. When everyone awoke, they decided to make their way down there while Kyrie has her armor repaired. They meet a goblin merchant from the Isle of Cornest, a place that Ivani and Littlebird lived, and somewhere Flint was all too familiar with. Turns out Kreekar is an old pirate merchant friend of Flint's, and they begin talking. After some trade and new discoveries, Zatish whisks the party away to a secluded hot spring. My name is Ashley, and I play Littlebird. Hi, my name is Bree, and I will be playing Kyrie. Hi, I'm March, and I play Flint Bright. Hi, my name is John, and I'll be playing Gooey. And I'm Rob the DM, and welcome to the Homebrew. As you're all sitting around, Ivani kind of stands up and says, Well, I'm going to go back. Fucks off back. Rents a private room in the tavern and just starts studying. Um, you may encounter him on the road while <laughs> going back because he's walking and you'll take a carriage there. We'll see how it plays out, I guess. Um, sure. For listeners, um, Nyax, who plays Ovani, uh, isn't here at the moment. It's going to be a bit delayed with joining the session, but due to time constraints, yada, yada, yada. Um, he will be joining later on. Zatish leans into Captain and goes, I I have another surprise for you all as well. Mm-hmm. Puts the towel on, stands up, goes back into the tent and gets changed back into her armor and stuff and comes out. Rests her hand on Stryker and says, I made a deal with the peacekeepers. And I paid the full amount, and the cart and striker are now yours completely. Horse noises is yours now. She looks at each of you, and she says, Well, I'm I'm going to be heading off. Um, she looks at the peacekeeper who is on the cart, kind of motions him to get off it. I'll be being a- escorted to the capital. Um, I'll have someone from the capital inform you via um, Ozak's communication stone Um, a good time for you all to come to the capital Um, it will probably be in a week or so Uh, give paperwork a chance to be filled out that kind of thing thank you all for making such fond memories with me Fond memories, and she looks at the dagger that's like now like strapped to her like thigh, and kind of shudders a bit. She goes, "It wasn't all fond, but I had a good time regardless." Thank you all. Thank. She gives each of you a hug and walks off into the tree line. Oof. Flynn gives shouts, don't die, please. Don't die. I'll try. <laughs> Go. You <To> die. <laughs> don't die. We broke into her house and made her kill someone for the first time. And she gave us a horse. Correction, yeah. you broke into her house. You were complicit in the act. <laughs> You're an accessory. If I go down, you will come true. down with me. I actually began researching a spell to help us if we need to do that again. Oh. It is ready when needed. Hmm. What is plan now? I don't know. I would like to return to town. There were things I wanted to do. I mean, Kari needs to wait for her armor. Mm. Yeah, you all have got, um, by the time you get back, it'll be two days for Kairi's armor to be repaired, I think they said. Because they said three days when you gave it to him. Did Ozak tell us to wait in Caspot, though? Yeah. 
Mm. We should probably get back then. Well, he told you he would appreciate it if you all could look after Casfault for a little bit while there's no Imperial Guards and while more forces were on their way. That's fuck all to do with Casfault. We could break into someone else's house. <laughs> I'd love you. Let's make a new friend. Yeah. We will have two horses on card. <laughs> Yeah, that's how we make friends. I guess we all go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say. I guess you know, there's not really much else to do except head back to Castle. Mm. We do yeah. have those invitations as well. Uh, yeah, but it's kind of something we should do on the way to Ormond. Mm. Well, the fucking black market is almost back the way you came, pretty much. Baby. I know, but... Black market, baby? <laughs> First of all, Kyrie doesn't have any armor. Secondly, uh, we need to wait for whatever. I was going to say, what do you all want to do? Do you all want to head back to Cast Vault? Do you all want to chill in the fucking hot tub, essentially, for a bit? Like, I, I know Flint... I know Flint wants to go and... I know it's just sounds extremely out of character, but go to a bookshop. He wants to do a bit of research. Yes. Now yes. Yes. <laughs> can he read? Uh, he can try. Okay. I will teach you. That's like a genuine question, by the way. <laughs> he, Come on, I, know, I know he's definitely. To read. Not, he's definitely not illiterate. For he's more. Sake. He's more educated than he appears. Surprisingly. Since Ovani is gone, you will be my new assistant. An experiment. I Yay. mean, wait, do we still experiment with Captain? I mean, I drank ethanol, so. This is <laughs> true. But, in return, you said that there was four things with this amulet, and I remember only getting three of them. Correct. Are you gonna spill the last one, or are you gonna keep that secret? It is. complicated. Oh, everything with this dumb thing is. Mm -hmm. I think we're here to relax. And I don't really want to be thinking about that right now. I was yeah. told that there's a fucking monster. I don't know what kind of beast it is. Emma Gorgon. That thing, yeah. Just chilling in this hot tub with us. I think. Technically, I... it's not a beast, it's a fiend. Yeah. Correct. Also. Technically, the necklace is also a person. Uh, that is the fourth thing, by the way. Ah, oh, okay. That's a lot less deadly than I thought it'd be. Well, thank you. Wait, is the necklace sent to him? Yeah. Kind of. The necklace and the demogorgon are two different things. Yeah. If I can read its thoughts, and it was successful, then yes. Hmm. It's also shown that it, like, wants to eat stuff, so it has, like, a definitely a will of its own. Yeah, but that doesn't make it sentient. Alright. So... Book, bookstore and castle, I yeah. guess? That Sounds would be good. the library. Uh, not the library, the church. <laughs> Great, all of my knowledge is coming from... Was that where I got church. my thingy? Yeah, that's how you got your book. That's where Breeze finally found a god. <laughs> <laughs> Breeze went to church once and was like, well, I'm religious now. Enlightened, even though I was a paladin beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that Kyrie was just a paladin through sheer force of will. Yeah. <laughs> I would also like to visit Dooley when we get back. Hmm. Good call. And also see Jessica. If that would be on the way. I'm trying to recall the guy's name. The one who had his memories reset. Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. 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 Would his um mill be like on the way back into Cast Vault? Yeah, it's like just outside but... the front gate. Yeah. Okay. But he won't remember any of you. It doesn't matter. I want to stop by and drop off a gift. 
<laughs> Gooey throws the fucking explosive tennis ball at the thing. I was gonna say Gooey Molotov's the mill. <laughs> you don't know me. Don't test me. <laughs> Should we head back then? Or well, do we only win to and just keep hanging out here for a while? I don't have any purpose to be here, to be honest. You seem to have no purpose. I don't have purpose anymore. <laughs> I uh, seem to have no purpose. I have taken no, your purpose left. of non. <laughs> I have taken your purpose of non. <laughs> uh, well, we kindly have a horse now. Um, little bird, can you ride horses? You seemed to be good last time. Yeah, I'm great at it. Are they going to have to roll again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's fine, I'm great at horses. <laughs> right, I'm just going to get on the, the, the cabin in the back <laughs> and go to sleep. Alright. So, right. so, so a rolled animal handling. Yeah. Two. That's two. Oh, Alright. Um. What a great time to be sleeping. Little bird gets on the uh, front of the car and like taps horse noises. I need you to roll a d12. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's a ten. Horse noises bucks its legs and just fucking cracks you in the chest. You just take like ten points of damage. I think the funniest thing is would be that the second the hooves connected, blood just flies out of the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Just like, what? Ugh. Everything okay up there? Everything going well? Yeah. You keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Goo sort of You've gotta be fucking kidding me. Front. What did you oh, roll? No. What did you get? <laughs> <laughs> Need you to roll a D twelve. It's you son of a pump. <laughs> Old by a horse. <laughs> You take 11 points of damage! <laughs> Little bird, coughing and spattering blood, picks up the reins and gives them a quick, like, whip to tell horse noises to start moving forward. But the coughing and spluttering startles horse noises as it kicks again. <laughs> Are you conscious? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just someone sort of waddles to the front, just seizing it poked in the face. I think I'm just gonna lie on the floor for a second. Good idea. Is he gonna stay here? This is okay. You could always put a little bird in the back and someone else could try. No, I'm, yes. I've got this. I, I'm, I'm sure you do. I'm gonna go and pet horse noises first. <laughs> okay. I, I feel like that's what's going wrong. I haven't said hello yet. Horse noises notices you bloody and worn and gives your face a lick. Yeah, thanks. This is your fault. I need you to make an animal handling for riding it again, but with advantage. <laughs> oh no. Is it bad? It's two ones, isn't it? A ten. Uh, so okay. Five. Okay. So it's going to take you the better part of a day because of how injured Little Bird is. Oh, um, another fucking kind of, You keep kind of like your eyes kind of flutter every now and again because of how weak you are. But I'm not that yeah, weak. <laughs> you've been bucked in the chest twice to anyone that had kind of fucking put them on their ass a bit. I mean, yeah, I've lost over half my health, but that's not the point. <laughs> Um, it was already getting pretty late, but luckily it's not that bad uh, on the way back. You all know that the Ankegs are 
like on the way back so you purposely don't you know have any lights or torches or anything like that you hear the chittering but they don't come out and try and attack you and you roll up to Cass Vault the next day pretty late at night everywhere seems to be closed travelers kind of stood there arms crossed kind of just looking out on the horizon waiting for something to fucking happen at the gate that you're coming up to and he goes hold where did you come from you look like shit fuck do, That's you, it. do you need medicine he kind of pulls out a health potion oh and yes hands it to you what happened out there? Were you attacked by the Ankeg? Yes. Your cart seems undamaged, so you got out luckily enough. Yeah, lucky. Maybe, maybe it's best if you you head back and lay down. There's <laughs> just blood on the fucking striker's tubes. <laughs> yeah. All over his back end and everything. I'm just coughing blood every now and again. Yeah, the young keg. <laughs> just gonna wave it and just slowly roll into town. Okay. Um, as you pull up to... Uh, you wouldn't be able to get that close to the centre of town because you've got the cart. So Traveller says, like, oh, we'll, um, we'll take our cart back. Don't worry. You just... You just get in and look My after car, yourself. Thank you. Your cart? As you say that, another uh, peacekeeper who is next to him goes, Yeah, they, um, they, Zatish bought the, uh, the cart and striker for them. And he goes, Oh, okay. My cart, my horse. I'm just gonna go and fucking. Where's the? There's a place for like carts and stuff, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um down by the. What do you call it? Down by Gorman and Beals. On oh, the I'll, Papal I'll, Maya. I'll take the car over that the car over that the way then. Oh, well, they were offering to do it for you. I was. Mm, fine. All I'm thinking of is a car park, but it's for carts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a car park. park. Parallel park it. Oh god, trying to parallel park a horse. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of take the carriage and horse noises. She kind of look at him and be like, you've betrayed me. <laughs> they take the cart. You're now at the south gate. Um, what do you want to do? I'm going to chug that health potion. <laughs> Okay, yeah, uh, restore the amount that health potion would do. Uh, hey. What are you all, like, what are you all doing? Are you just gonna go in and crash out? I think so. Who's carrying Kyrie? Oh, she's in the back of the cart still. Yeah, we'll just leave her. I don't think she slept for 20 for actually. <laughs> actually. I mean, it's just... <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> oh, you're still here. Good. You didn't die. No. To tavern, then? Yeah. Yeah. More drinking? Okay. Hell yeah. Oh, sleep. My blood. Put it back. Where did it go? All over Striker's ass. Oh, shit. So you'll get back in the tavern. Nada looks at you all. Whoever, uh, who's going upstairs? Me. Okay, you go Gooey. up and crash out. Gooey, you also go up and crash out. Um, what do Captain and Kyrie want to do? Are you all just going to drink and then go to bed? Do you want to have a drinking competition? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, it's all going to be on our tab, right? So... Doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 we'll be on tab. Yeah. Tab when I'm ping. <laughs> I don't know. 
any money anymore. I mean, I have a bit, but not anymore. So I'm not paying for any of this. Um, just so you're aware, your tab is currently at 26 gold and 5 silver. Oh, yeah, we can drink. That's completely fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. You both quite easily slam down five drinks. I need both of you to roll constitution saves for your next one. Oh, that's a dirty 20 on my end. Great. That's, that's a 10. Okay. Captain, still, boom, done. Kyrie struggles with this one a little bit. Both oh, of come you on, roll constitution you can do it. again for the next drink. That's uh, a 17. 18. Okay, Kyrie seems to have got her wind back. And Captain's still not struggling that much. Roll again. This is your eighth one. Oh, that's a six from me. Brick success, 24. Wow. Kyrie chugs this one, slams it down, and orders another one before you even get halfway through yours, and then Captain just <laughs> on the table. <laughs> I think I drank too fast. I think that's what it was. <laughs> is is it just Captain with us? With uh, yeah, Ivani's rented a private room in the tavern to study. Dewey's in bed, little bird's in bed. Okay. I'll carry Captain up the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little drunk, so I need to make a roll. No. Okay. I'll carry Captain up the bed and just for a money's hammock. Yeah. <laughs> you see a melty gooey on the floor. <laughs> but yeah, you'll fall asleep pretty quickly. It seems like the spa day is what you needed. All your muscles are nice and relaxed. Your breathing's better, apart from little bird. Uh, who's still not doing too cushy, but, you know. I'll be fine, I just need a nap. Nothing much really happens in the night. You all wake up the next day. It's kind of sunny and foggy outside at the same time. What do you all want to do? You know what I want to do. Oh, yeah. So, Gooey would wake up before the rest of you. Or maybe about the same time as Little Bird, actually. Because uh, Little Bird wakes up with the sun. Yeah. Uh, you would have all had long rest, by the way. Act of full HP, let's go. Yeah, I mean, Gooey's not trying to be stealthy about this at all, but if it wakes Captain up, it does. And there's. I'll say gonna... because Captain was drinking and Ivani's not in the room with you, you get out without much noise. Yeah. And I'm just going to start making my way out of town. Okay. Yeah, easily enough. The, the, the walls, uh, the walls, the town is pretty quiet. There's not a whole lot going on. There's a couple of peacekeepers kind of leaning on the walls, just... <sighs> Have you heard that the, uh, the peacekeepers from the capital are going to be here in a few days? Yeah, yeah, I did hear that, actually. Hopefully it means we can work less hours. I mean, less hours means less money. Less hours also means more sleep, though. You're right there. Good morning. Morning. Do you both need to sleep more? Yeah, but we'll get more sleep once the, uh, you know, the peacekeepers arrive. Hmm. I don't have it with me. I can get you something that will help. What do you mean, help? Help sleep? Oh, we have no problem falling asleep, don't you worry. Okay. He kind of taps a flask on his side. Just gotta wait for the shift to be over. Okay. I will leave you now. Bye. Bye. And just waddle away. Yeah. <laughs> and 
Yeah. After a little bit more walking, you start to come across the hill. Uh, you can see the windmill there turning. What do you want to do? I'm guessing the big Goliath guy isn't outside on a watch or anything. No. Okay. And just waddle up to the front door and just. Hello. You hear like floorboards creaking, and then the door opens, and it's the Goliath still kind of like asleep in his eyes, head tilted at a side because of how tall he is. Like, kind of big animal skin, uh, almost like blanket, kind of thrown over one shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Morning. Uh, what time is it? I don't know. Time is a strange concept. Anyway, is okay. Jessica here? Probably asleep. Oh, I see. I will wait. And Gooey will just sit on the floor. <laughs> I want to come in. Okay, whatever is good with me. I do not have blood. Okay. It's not related to her. <laughs> it's just something they've been thinking about. Yeah. Okay, and Gooey will just... Sit and wait for everybody else to wake up. The um, Goliath sits next to you, rubs his eyes, takes like a, it picks up this like barrel that was next to his bed that's just filled with water, chugs a load of it, it kind of reaches into this sack, pulls out a harmonica that's quite dainty in his big hands and just starts to play a nice tune on it. But you can still hear the oh, coming through it. That is definitely a unique sound. Jesse used to get scared on the night time. I don't play. Hmm. Do you have other instruments? No. Hmm. Is there any, like, barrels lying around? Yeah. Okay. It's probably a waste of a spell slot, but it's worth it. Uh, I'll just sort of tap the my stuff lightly on the ground and Alistair will appear, and I'll just command him to sort of Find a barrel and just lightly tap in rhythm with. Oh, with yeah, his a jam session. Yeah. Gooey and chill. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, chill and study. <laughs> Gooey beats to chill and study too. Yeah. Yes. I do want oozling lo-fi now. Oh mm. yeah. After oh. a little while, you hear a door downstairs slowly. Oh. And you hear a little pitter patter of feet, and Jessica's there. Your music woke me up. Sorry, Jesse. Um, oh, jeez. He's here to see you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because he's just gonna sort of like reach inside. Um, actually, no. No, he's just gonna sort of turn around and sort of like stick his arm inside his chest and try and find the correct uh, stone. Um, you can make a roll for that, please. I will. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh, wait, hang on a minute. Oh, I just barely passed. <laughs> that could have been bad. You could have just gone, here you go, Jesse, and handed her a fucking rune of, like, firebolt. Oh, I've got burning hands and magic missile. Yeah, this is oh, terribly. God. Okay. Okay. So I can remove this from my inventory now that I got the right one. Um, 
I'll sort of crouch down to Jessica and just sort of say, Hello. Hello. And I sort of take this soul stone and sort of, This is a gift to you. Hi. And I sort of just like take one hand and sort of have a basket sort of coil around my hand. And say, This is my friend, Basket. She oh. protects me, and now you can have your own. Uh, oh? And sort of like hand her the stone and just take like one of the rocks I have that hasn't been a hasn't been ruined at all, and just sort of do like a set of hand gestures and sort of say, "Think of your favorite animal. It may work, depending on what you choose." Takes the room. The the room? The rune. He grabs the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. She she grabs the rune and kinda holds it close and starts like thinking really hard about what her favourite animal is. You see her like grasping it and then start twitching like bad memories are coming in and then relaxing a little bit. And you watch as the rune slowly fizzles away and she ends up with a marking on her hand of, like, it's almost like a, a weird uh, ink blot face. And it starts to glow slightly and she puts her hand on her shoulder and a blood silk spider appears. Oh no. She looks at it and she goes, that makes sense. I like spiders. Well, that was unexpected. She pets him on the head and she goes, I'm I'm going to call him James. Well, James will <laughs> always be there for you. <laughs> and you can poof them away, and back again. I'm not going to get rid of him. It is more for convenient purposes. This kid's like five. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of convenient purposes they're gonna need. Also, you can see through them if you want to. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. You see her go to Pat James, and the hand glows again, and another one appears next to it. Oh, oh. I, I'm going to call this one Mike. She scritches both of them on the head. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> just for the record, her creature summon thing isn't just Blood Silk Spider. It's a swarm of blood silk spiders. I will leave now. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> just, just like it turns around, just sweating. Oh, if we could sweat, just pulls the hat down. Good day. Uh. As you close the door, you hear, "Oh, little Jesse friend," and then you hear. And then Jessica goes, James, no! <laughs> and then start crying. He reruns the hell <laughs> Yeah, you, you get back to the tavern. You see Little Bird sat downstairs. You see Little Bird sat downstairs, shoveling a bowl of soup into their face. Yeah. No one else seems to be downstairs yet. It's still early hours. Good morning. Oh god, is it? I think so. I'm... Never mind. <laughs> just sits down, just sort of asks for the bucket. <laughs> Nada brings out the bucket. Is it Dang. the same bucket every time? Yeah. Is it a different bucket? Does it get washed? 
It doesn't need to. Gooey polishes it when he comes out. Yeah. Saves okay. Nada doing dishes. You think this man cleans his plates thoroughly? No. I hope so. I'm giving this no. a one-star review. <laughs> I'm going on to TripAdvisor and writing <laughs> bad things about you. I'm actually curious. You also don't have memories, right? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I can work on something for that. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> what happened with this, by the way? And it's a point to the ring that allows me to basically speak common. Because I know you briefly mentioned it, but you didn't really talk much oh. else about it. Little Bird did also give it to Reb. Yeah. So mm. they don't even have it anymore. Mm. I can't use it. Is it a problem with the spell? No. Um. What do you know of the Kenku? What, did, what would Gooey know of the Kenku, I guess? <laughs> History! Okay. Let's see. Where is it? There we go. Okay. Eh! Uh, 13? You know the basic stuff about Kanku. And what you read in the book that was given to you in the Gripply Town. Um, would Gooey know about how Kenku were sort of made? Maybe not. It might be as... an old, like, Kenku tale. Yeah, that's like an old, old thing. The story is... The Kenku were servants for a, uh... A god has long been forgotten, and uh, we were sent here to the material plane because we we stole light, we stole voices from him, and we have been cursed to never be able to get either, and to live our lives. So I put the ring on, and uh, assuming you know there was sort of a a an old, old fairy tale. Uh, I should have known. That would be a bit screw to that. <clears throat> so I had to put it on, and uh, I got shouted at by a dead god. You all have very bad luck, don't you? <laughs> yeah. One is targeted constantly by gods. The other has a de demon inside a necklace. And the other is an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. And another has no idea of anything about themselves. Yeah. The only thing Flint remembers is men. <laughs> but that's why I made the pact with the, uh, the Raven Queen. She promised me a voice and she promised me wings. Hmm. Oh, she delivered on the first part. Kind of. Ish. Interesting. Maybe if I make a pact, I will get all my memories back. And know what I am. I've got an idea of what you are. You do? Yeah, you're a bit slimy. This is accurate. <laughs> Shall we go wake up the others? Do you want to wake up Kyrie? True. <laughs> well, Alistair hasn't had a good record with her. <laughs> so maybe not. Hmm. She doesn't like Basket either. I need a third friend. <laughs> Who would be better? I think I need technically the count as the third one. Mm. Wait, let me not have to wake Kari up. I could do it. She could probably punch my face, though. But... You are 
gooey. I don't know that the planks would hurt that much. I will test this theory, and I walk up and start going to <laughs> Kyrie's room. <laughs> okay. Kyrie's there asleep in the hammock. Just poke the face a little. This is entirely up to how you two play this out, by the way. Are you just gonna, like, let off a little murmur and grumble a little bit and then just roll on our side? It's morning. <laughs> she slowly just rises up and collects her head a little bit and just stands straight back. Oh, good morning, Gooey. He's like inches away from your face. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you like say stuff with like your eyes closed sometimes when you're waking up? Yeah. Yeah. Carrie would do that. <laughs> just say good morning, Gooey. And then like opening her eyes. That's like just big eyes, big gooey eyes. Carrie would just like. And then Carrie would just. Quickly just uh, untangle herself and dust herself back off and get everything ready, everything presentable and stuff like that and just be like, ah, Good morning, Gooey. You can't scare me like that. Oh, yes, fear. That is a thing. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Right. I was going to burn the ropes on the hammock and slam you awake, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, good joke, Gooey. No, I just nudge the, the slime. Ah, yes, <laughs> joke. That is also a thing. Where are others? Little Bird is downstairs chugging soup. Captain, I assume, is asleep. Ovani is studying. Let's go wake up, Captain. Okay. I'm just gonna stand at the door and usher Gary in to the to wake Captain up. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I want to test something. I'm just gonna check a spell real fast. Oh, no. I just wanna try this out. Right, let me see here. Prestidigitation. There we are. Can I make noise with this? I can. Uh, hmm. Oh, what do we know what this smell is, though? No, they won't bother. Screw it. Just open the door and just sort of poke Captain's face as well. Standing much further back now, almost like <laughs> on the other side of the room up against the wall. Just the stand from the distance. The out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, no. Let me lay in for once, please. But Osak is here. Oh, I, I you know, Flint gets up. I don't one hundred percent believe you. Can I do an insight check? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do I have to do go you... deception? Uh, yeah. Mm, that's a three. <laughs> Oh my god, I beat you with a six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Oh, fuck. Okay, give me a minute. Flank is kind of like, okay, give me a minute. I need a bit of time. I am sweaty. <laughs> uh, he kind of stumbles out. Uh, where is he? He's back. He's here. Huh? Yes. Just turns and just opens the door and... Just looks at Kyrie, just like, I, uh, uh oh. <laughs> and just slowly just makes their way outside and just walks Are you downstairs. lying to me? You gooey bastard. <laughs> he just walks downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> just fast down the stairs. As you're going down the stairs, the ground begins but, to rumble and you get thrown off a bit. Flinger shouts, can we have a normal morning for once, please? 
Nada looks at you, like, kind of stumbling stump down the stairs, and he goes, Don't worry about it. It's just another dungeon appearing. It's nothing to be worried about. Fucking what? Excuse me. Oh, um... Recently, uh, new dungeons have been appearing and staying for a little bit and then disappearing. Usually the peacekeepers get to them pretty quick, um, because whatever's inside is yours for the taking if you get there first. I think the second little bird here thought the word there on their feet and out the door. I guess That's what would this be a normal field trip? <laughs> With the frizz? Frizz? No way! <laughs> would be a shame if I went into the dungeon and there was just, ooh, my fixed pair of armor and the sword. Ooh, that would be really, really cool. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Shame you've got to wait a day for your armor to be finished. Yep. And shame little birds going into the dungeon <laughs> as I'm not even downstairs. Yeah, I assume Google will walk downstairs and just see the little birds just vanished. I think you'd probably just see, like, the back of little bird. Like, the scarf Feathers. behind them. <laughs> No, I'm uh, going to leave that and just <laughs> sit down at the table. I'm feeling we need to get a charred leash for them. <laughs> Stop them running off. There's a little bird, arms crossed, looking really grumpy with a harness on. Yeah. One of Being those, like, held back. Character. One of those, like, chest baby carriers. Yes. Cause, cause, because they're small enough, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, a four foot. It's on glint. <laughs> Five foot is... Little Bird is a four foot taller if they actually stand up properly. Yeah. But you don't. I mean, you somehow have a one foot hunch. Which it, is ridiculous. It's less that. It, it's fucking... Birds just don't stand straight. No. And you can extend your neck. Yeah, I can. Thanks for reminding me. I know. Like a pigeon. Yeah. I am nothing if, nothing if not a sentient pigeon. <laughs> pigeon with a sword. Pigeon with a sword. <laughs> Where's the fucking bread? So Kyrie's gonna come downstairs and she's gonna be like <clears throat> straight to the counter, not really taking uh, any notice of her surroundings. She's just gonna walk out and go, food please, and just take anything what is given to her. Nada um, hands you some already like cooked and waiting for you, like hot steamy mutton with leeks again, like the dried leeks. Thank you, you know me. And then Kyrie's gonna like have obviously the, the bowl of mutton in one hand and then do like this weird Shaolin sit where she's like flying midair, but she's like reading her parchment and stuff like that and just trying to, you know, be a good paladin while she's uh, eating her... Just sit at a when... table like a normal person, can she? No, she's, she's happy that she can use her wings again, like, fully. So yeah. she's, she's just using them to fly around a bit. So she's just flying and, like, trying to keep her place when she's, like, midair. Yeah. As y'all are eating, you hear a knock on the door. And, uh, Beale walks in and kind of points at you dramatically. Points and at then with a, you. Oh. And then with a flourish, reveals your armor. It's still a bit beaten up. And he goes, we didn't get round to finishing it, finishing it, because uh, you're adventurous. I figured you'd Want to go into the dungeon as soon as possible. Uh, you can bring it back when you're done, though, and we'll carry on with the repairs. So couldn't... Right. It would be the same. It would be, rather than having 18 AC, you would have 16. So going back and getting it fully repaired would add an extra 2 AC onto it, but at the moment, it's wearable. It's pretty much fine. Are going to try and barter for some money back? 
Why? Because I'm broke. Okay. And they brung me back unfinished armor. He said he'd finish it when you come back if you wanted. Like, for free. Like, he'd carry on with the repairs, but he brought well, it, it better be out. for free. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not... Yeah, you, you can try and barter if you want. I'll barter him. Why not? Okay. Go for it. Uh, Kerry's gonna walk up to him and say, Hey, uh, since we're adventurers, and, uh, I wasn't really thinking at the time, uh, my armor really means a lot to me as a paladin. Hey. Um, that was kind of all the gold what I had. Um, as an adventurer, you, you, you need to know that we, we need a lot of gold for other things. And, and stuff to go into dungeons like that with. I um, mean, but as an adventurer, you'd also make money doing the things. So, what what I'd like to propose to you is, could I maybe have some of my money back, what I gave you, and I could give you some later on? I've got 50 gold on me right now. I don't have to roll for that. No. Thank you very much, Beal. Means so much to me. I'll 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 take the armor and like bow. Just in respect. He looks Not a bit disgruntled, but you know. Yeah. Uh immediately dashing upstairs to put the armor back on and um trying to fold up the clothes to get back to Beal. You're not gonna keep the clothes on? Well they're not mine, are they? He said you could keep them. Okay. Uh, definitely not the, not the the waistcoat, just the t-shirt and like the, the short pants. Yeah. I'll, I'll just wrap up the rest of it and give it to him. Oh, he... And just be like, I don't really need these anymore. Thank you very much for letting me lend them. All right. Thank you for taking fifty gold back. He kind of walks away, a bit disgruntled. Result. <laughs> very happy with that. Uh. NPC's been nice for once. Never once. Right. Uh, it's not the NPC's fault, you're a dick. Well, they were dicks to me at the start, so I, I hit back. He also offered you the exact same armor for 200 gold cheaper that you could have there and then. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's on you. Well, yeah, it is on me. You could have, like... Leaned into it a bit more. Um, I'm going to hear the word dungeon off Beal. And then look around and see Little Bird's not there. And I'm going to be like, ah, okay. Y'all don't even know the direction it came from. Uh -huh. No, Little Bird's just running around town asking people where it is. Okay, before y'all go and do that, do y'all want to visit anywhere else? Stock up on anything, yada yada yada. I'm broke, so no. I would like to quickly stock up and do these. Okay. I'm you swing. <laughs> yes. You swing open the door to Dooley's, and she's there sipping her coffee. Hands in's on the desk this time, kind of doing some big fox stretches. Good boy. Oh, yeah. Hello, there. spellcaster. What can I get you? I have returned, and I sort of, like, I'm aware. take the pouch I have and just slam a hundred gold on the counter. So oh, my. I would like as much ink and parchment for transcribing spells, please. Also, and I put ten more gold, incense for the spell of familiar summoning, please. You have enough room for that much? Correct. Okay. She scrapes the gold off the table. It takes her like five, ten minutes to get everything together. And she comes around the corner dragging a sack. It's like, probably would come up to like your knee in person, John. Mm -hmm. And she's just dragging it on the floor. She's not very strong. She strenuously lifts it up and puts it on the desk. There you go. 
I see you went for quantity over quality. No. We're, uh, with everyone just kind of having spells nowadays, um, spell scribing stuff just doesn't sell as well. Would it be good if you to carry this? No. That's why I asked if you had enough room, dearie. Would you happen to sell anything that would help me carry all this? Um... I'm thinking... She flips a ledger. Um... Just like we do a Kyrie. shipment of an interdimensional pocket in um, about a week and a half. That'll sell for about 1,500 gold. Ari is with you, and uh, we'll be offering to carry it back to the tavern. Yeah, because you can always leave it in your room. Hmm. Guri, so is, who's with Guri at this point? <laughs> Ari. Okay. Uh, hmm. Would it be worth it? I'm trying to remember how much the worth this thing was before we and I sort of briefly talked about it. You can ask. <laughs> mm. I remember because I remember the the troll uh the ogre who owns the blue blue rug general, she mentioned the price of the red pearl. But I don't remember the exact one. I think it, it was, was about one thousand five hundred. I was gonna say it was in that sort of price margin, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Gooey's just gonna sort of turn around and just sort of like put their hand like in their chest and sort of like pull out the small pearl and just sort of like motion to Kyrie and then motion to whatever she's talking about. Ari is gonna be completely confused. It just shrugs and rolls their eyes and sort of takes the pearl in hand. Would you accept trade? You can always sell something to me and use the gold to buy it. So just hold the red, the all explosion red pearl. Oh, oh, oh my. Um, I, um. Oh, that is a doozy, isn't it? She gingerly takes it off you. Do you. Do you know what it does? Yes, I do. I carry it in my face. I... Okay, can you tell me? I believe I did cast Identify on it at a point. Yeah, you did. So you, I think it believe it was 10d10 fire damage or something in an area? Uh, 6d10, I believe. Yeah. She looks at it and she goes, I don't, su I don't suppose you've got the... Uh, the safety box it came in, do you? Oh. That's what that was. I, otherwise, this... Even just rolling off a shelf could detonate. Oh, I've been carrying that in my body. I, that's probably not the best course of action, I'm going to be honest, dearie. Hmm. Um, well... Give me a second. She runs into the back and pulls out uh, this like purple cloth with like gold embroidery around the edge and kind of wraps it in it and ties a little knot at the top. I'll... I'll tell you what, to avoid you being in any danger, I'll hold on to this. When the pocket comes in, I'll let you have the pocket and I'll keep this in the shop locked away in a safe area so that it doesn't detonate. How's that? Okay. Okay. Just just to show I I mean no ill will or anything. She takes off her necklace uh that you can see is a small like uh vial of uh like darkened blood. Now I wouldn't usually part with this. This is my husband's blood. It would ruin me 
if I lost the only thing I have left of him. Giving you this on goodwill? That, you know, I'm, I'm going to hold up my end of the bargain. She hands it gingerly over to you. Is it corks? It's it's like a sealed glass vial. Like, it's in... just glass all the way around. Like a little uh, capsule. Okay. Yeah. Right. Gui thinks about throwing it into their face and just swallowing it and keeping it in their body. <laughs> oh, God! But, but then just sort of shakes their head and puts it in a... Um, I think I have a pouch somewhere on my back. Yeah, I probably do. Yeah, I'll just put it in one of those and just sort of... I will keep it safe. Okay, dear. Um, right, now to the church, correct? Mm. Okay, you get there, it's the same spider lady as before. I can't remember what her <laughs> voice is, actually, so... No, it's the elf that Breeze met. Hello. <laughs> How may I help? Hi, I was just wondering what kind of books do you guys have on uh, a creature known as a uh, demogorgon? Oh, um, uh, we, we may have, um, something about it here. Please follow me. Oh, she okay. leads you to the back where there's loads of bookshelves and stuff. And you see her, like, flipping through, uh, probably about half the size of a manga. Multiple books that are all titled, like, after different creatures. I, um, the Debbie Gorgon, is that a fiend or a demon? Uh, you're asking the wrong person, that's why I'm here for information. Oh, okay, um, she kind of turns to the other shelf and carries on sifting through. I, I don't think we do, unfortunately. Nah. Do you, this is going to sound really weird. Do you have any, uh, like, kids' books? Books for children to read, or books about children? No, books for kids to read, uh... Um, we may have a couple, although okay. they may also be religious. That's I assume fine. that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, just for context, Flint is trying to find if they have, like, a baby's first magic book. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Um, talk of the arcane arts. A bit. Um, um, we we may have something. Uh, beginners first arcane arts. Um, she sifts through a pile of very dusty books and pulls out uh, a reasonably sized book. Um, we have the beginner's guide to message. Uh, would that be something that you're interested in? Oh, it's a thick book for one spell. Are we all there, by the way? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Did I... Flint go to Dooley's with everyone, or did no. Flint go off on his... Okay, uh, unless I mean... Little Bird went with Flint, then Flint... No, I mean, around. Little Bird's sprinting around. Okay. Yeah, I was assuming this was happening while they were at Dooley's. Yeah. Okay. Um, magical knowledge is something that doesn't come naturally to a lot of people, and that is completely fine. Not everyone is able to do these things from birth, and that is why these books exist. However, they do require extensive research and reading, um, and that is what is stored in these books. Uh, Mastering a spell of this kind, uh, depending on your innate ability, could take between a week to three years. Three years. Uh, I don't. I don't think I really have that long. Uh, that makes it sound like I'm gonna die. I could die. Um, oh. Um, <laughs> do you have anything that's like, say, I have like the most innate ability of magic in the world what's like the just do these things with your hands and then fire magic comes out i don't know anything <laughs> about magic <laughs> Flint's like an old man trying to understand what the internet is when it comes mm. to magic. I, 
believe you're asking the wrong kind of person. Uh. <laughs> um, there are places that would advise making a pact with a god or performing sacrifices to gods in order for power. Um, you may find grimoires, although they are very few and fair between, um, that would instantly um, grant you the knowledge of years of research of a certain spell. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm sorry. We, we simply cannot do more than that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, thank you for your time, then, at least. Of course, any time. Once you just awkwardly leave. <laughs> okay. Little bird, make an investigation for me. Yeah, baby. 17. Okay, you ask a couple of peacekeepers and they go, yeah, dungeons appear every now and again. It's kind of just par for the course at this point. Uh, we do play golf occasionally on Sundays. Um, and then you come across a peacekeeper um, who has the circular pattern rather than the diamond or the uh, square and he goes oh you're interested in the dungeon are you <laughs> what would you like to know about it where is it well you found the right person it just so happens that my magic allows me to pinpoint certain things that certain people have an inkling for looking for I've been less useful on the battlefield and more on investigations and such. Um, pass me your hand. It's gonna very tentatively hold my hand out. He pulls out a small dagger and cuts your hand and then takes a little bit of your blood. That's just fucking pull the kibesh out. I, no, this is for my magic. You will understand. You watch him Correct. like... He, like, the blood is on his pinky. On the back of his hand, he draws a small rune and then kind of clasps his hands together and the blood kind of fades into his hand. And as he pulls his hands apart, you see almost like, you know, in, like, modern movies, there's, like, the digital top-down maps that are 3D. Yeah. Like, a topography map. Yeah, yeah, it's like that with like a glowing, well, two glowing red orbs. The first one is about a day and a half's walk from Casfault. The other one is in the center of the mountains in the Principality of Smotfia. Oh shit! Well, it looks like can you're I pull my for... map out and mark them down? Yeah. It looks to me like your heart is split in twine and you're looking for two different things. Okay, I know what's what. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that will be whatever gold you have on you as a donation to the. I high five him and run off. I. Uh, oh. Buck 12. Again! Again! Little bird just shouts fuck 12 as they run away. <laughs> That's it. Okay. You'll kind of meet up in the center of town or coming back from your places. I Little think... bird sprinting and sweating. Captain looking very downtrodden and <laughs> gooey tentatively holding a pocket while Kairi, as I'm assuming you've dropped off the parchments and stuff. Kairi kind of stood there polishing spots of the armor and looking quite smug that she's got her armor back on. I just, I think. Like, little birds sprinting around the town, shouting uh, their names, and just, like, trying to find them as fast yeah, as you, possible. You come across them pretty quickly. It's just, like, like get to a stop and pull the map out and just, like, oh, fuck, where is it? Oh, fuck. Uh, uh, and then pull out the uh, the map for the Market of the Beat, and I'll show them where the thing is. Yep. Where are you? You can see that it is about a day and a half's walk out of town in the similar direction to the bandits. 
We are going yeah. to go and have some fucking fun. Where did you learn this? No, peacekeeper. He asked for money and I ran away. Hell yeah. That checks out. <laughs> I just pulled my hand up for a high five. I high five them. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Okay. Apparently, the dungeon has interesting things and might just straight up be fun to do. Um, I think we could handle it, but should we either take Ovani or leave a note for Ovani? Hmm. Leave a note. I I feel like we should drag Ovani with us. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Like, Barney can catch up when they join, don't worry. We'll we're going to be a day and a half travel <laughs> with a car. They can rent a car, it's fine. Maybe we should leave a note with Ovani. <laughs> you know, I'm getting a really... really big Weird vibe that we shouldn't... that we shouldn't take Ovani with us. No point distracting them from <laughs> study. I mean, study is important. With magic. Not only More that, important you know than money. Peacekeep you know Sorry, the peacekeepers no. get on dungeons very quick and loot them very quick. Our right, voice is it. telling me we should hurry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck it. I was just pull um my notebook out and just write like a quick like, hey Owani, we're going here. I'm gonna draw like a really rough map. Yep. Uh and like really roughly try and fucking explain where we're going uh i'm just gonna say we're going to go to a dungeon apparently they just appear sometimes this country is fucking wild uh when you're done come help and i'm gonna give it to nada and ask him to give it to albany when he comes back i'll slide it under his door for him thank oh okay. thank oh okay just, literally just copy gooey's thank yeah. Um, because not a good man. He's trying his best. He's doing his best, and I love him for it. Oh, so yes, magic is more important than money. Answering no. question. No. No, we need a lot of money. I had money. It's all gone now. Cool items in there, though, Goody. Very there, true. There might be a cool staff, or like... There might be a goo person. We Listen. should hurry now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Run to Striker quick. Run you'll, to. You'll see Striker in his separate section now. Because um, he's an asshole. He... No, it's because. He's being tried he's... for crimes. He's privately owned. Um, a peacekeeper hands over the reins to him and kind of pushes your car out. He's quite a built peacekeeper. I'm not jacked. I'm just going to watch pushes it. I'm like, holy the... shit. Yeah. Pushes your car out. Oh. There we go. Okay. How to move those barrels. I'm going to give him a gold and just tell him to take his shirt off. It's very derogatory. I'll take the gold, though. Fair enough. in his pocket and walks off. Fair enough. I, I, um, I get that. <laughs> so, after about a day's travel, uh, you reach the site at about midday. You can see the ground has kind of sunken in, and there's a door there, and at the top of where the door would be on the actual ground... You see a very similar monolith that March and Agui know of that <laughs> disintegrates uh -oh. things if it gets too close. Uh oh. Just look at Captain, just sort of small piece of gooey sweat just goes down the face. You think I should touch it again? Well, it worked the first time. I'm going to throw the amulet at it, see what happens. As the amulet gets close to it, you see, like, a purple aura kind of emanate from it. The amulet disintegrates and then reappears in your pocket. Oh, so now you reappear, not in front of my friend. Oh, I'm just kind of walks off a bit frustrated at the amulet. 
I'm gonna remove Striker from the car and like take him a couple hundred meters away or something and, and make sure he's safe and happy and not gonna run away. Yeah. I'll get him I'll find him somewhere nice to eat some grass. Oh no. This is the place just so that you can see it. This is just rough placement of where people are. There's the mum with that thing on top of the hill. Uh, yeah, this thing here. So, what do you all want to do? This is doored off, by the way. This is meant to be, like, doored off. But I couldn't find a door doored that would fit that bit. Yeah, like, it's a, it's a, like, door. You can see the large stone door has lots of almost like it's carved into it but way too realistic like those old marble carvings from Greece mm. like tormented faces kind of stretching through it cool. and you can see engraved in it yeah just in common it says the key is found within your head use the key to paint me red be aware of what you spurn for what you give shall be returned. I'm just gonna fucking pull out the compassion. Out my hand, I guess. And just slap on the door. It reacts to your blood, but it doesn't open. Hmm. Doesn't it need more blood? Hey, Can everyone I... complete on this door. Harry is gonna accept, but she's gonna take out her, her like, sharp and trowel. And pierce her cheek. Oh, and, all right. And mouth. smear some of it on the door. All right. It reacts again, but doesn't open. No. Wait, Gooey can't bleed. Exactly. He's too dumb but, for this. But the key, I don't have a key in my brain. Flynn goes up to the door, slams his head against the door. Hard enough to make you bleed? Yeah, sure. It reacts to the blood, but nothing else. Ah, I've just got a headache now. Uh, I need you to take a point of damage. That's fair. Hey, Gooey. Mm-hmm. Do you have any blood? No. Do you have any anyone's blood on you? No. That is a strange question. It's I could use basket. We're too stupid for this. Do we just gotta... Do we have to just cover it in blood? I'm really good with riddles and this one threw me off. <laughs> I'm glad you're good with riddles, Breeze. Because well, this is a dungeon. One. Problem is, I have an idea, but with GUI through the OG, it wouldn't work. The physicality, it wouldn't work. What's your idea? Mm, hang on. Because there is blood on the door. If it involves using blood, there is no. blood already on the door. No, it doesn't involve blood. Oh, uh, Gooey? Yes? With precedent shading, can you change the colour of things? And just waddle up to the door and just sort of place my hand on it and use it to turn the whole door red. Nothing happens. Well, where's the shop? Hmm. I mean, by process of elimination, the only words that are in there multiple times are you and key. Do I draw key in blood? Yeah. As you draw the key in blood, the door begins to glow. The tormented faces begin to writhe and change shape. And the door fades away. And as it does, Amalgamated by the blood you put on the door. Clones of yourselves. Everyone but Gary. Made from the tormented faces. Hmm? Come out of it and draw their weapons. I'd I need like you all to roll initiative. We've got a 22, a 20, a 19, and a 4. Mm -hmm. oh. They mm -hmm. get 18 on Flint's one. Mm -hmm. I was only expecting one of you to bleed on the door. <laughs> this is fine. Fun. Little bird gets oh another eighteen, uh, and eleven. I thought it was gonna give me eighteen again. <laughs> Thank fuck. 
So a little bird, Kyrie, Gooey. All three of the clones then Flint. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll start rolling my new character now, don't worry. <laughs> we all might have to. I'm so sorry, I thought there was only gonna be one lot of blood. <laughs> You really needed to make them full strength, huh? Oh, that's yeah. why you needed the character. Fuck your blood puzzle. Yeah, you would not <laughs> want to fight Gooey, Jesus Christ. I think yeah. I'm, me and Kyrie are going to be bad enough. Yeah, you've got to fight Little Bird and Kyrie. Yeah, good luck, right? Fucking hitting 16 armor class with 45 <laughs> health. Doesn't yeah, matter. Doesn't yeah, matter. But, <laughs> like, it's going to be you attacking you, babe. Gooey only has one attack roll spell. AC is not my thing. I, I killed that. a man by stamping on his nuts, and you think Little Bird isn't a threat. <laughs> the blood thing you can't use a shield, right? I mean, they're an exact copy of you. Well, yeah, you... <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, because of the, the fact they're made of blood, um, I am going to drop their AC by one each. Wow. You say that, that can make all the difference. That takes two of them down from fucking 16 AC to 15. It means I just need to roll a nine or higher to hit. So, top of the board, little bird. I would like to run myself through. Okay, you're moving towards yourself and then attacking, right? Yeah. Okay. Like uh, Roll attack. Printing at it, sword out. Uh, 18. Uh, yeah, that hits. Four, so nine. As you stab this clone of you in the shoulder, more blood than usual sprays out, but it makes this awful, like, twisted little bird shriek. I think I just copy the noise back at it. Uh, do you want to do anything else on your turn, or...? I don't think I can. Okay. Kyrie, what are you going to do, babe? I'm going to immediately just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> just... Ready myself for battle. I'll pull out my shield and sword. And... Okay, so that takes your AC up to 18, right? Yeah. Wow, it feels really good running into three enemies. Uh... <laughs> now you know what the fandoms feel. Three? so many. <laughs> right, I'm gonna sprint right into the middle of one. Middle of them. Like here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'm just gonna... I do apologize, but one of my runes again. Lightning. P. Uh... What's P? Poison. Poison. No, it's piss. Piss. <laughs> yes, I would like to, I would like to ur urinate on the blood. I'm probably just gonna use a fire rune. Stab the little bird clone. Okay. You strike the fire rune against your blade, and a couple of sparks come out, and it along the edge. Uh, roll for attack. Seventeen. Seventeen hits. Go ahead and roll damage plus one d four fire damage. Sixteen. 16 damage, fuck me. Uh, Alright, as you do, your sword kind of cleaves through it and the flame kind of sputters out because of all the fluid. But it's it's hurt and it lets out another screech. Gooey, it's your turn. First thing, because I'm going to be using one of the runes. Mm -hmm. I only have two of them, about to make an arcana check to see if I get the right one. <laughs> okay, yeah, so 17, so I do pick the right one. Yeah. Um, yeah, Gooey's just going to kind of sort of slap both their hands together and sort of pull a rune out of one of the left palm and sort of face it forwards and going to use one of the magic missile charges. Okay. And because it's an auto hit, all three uh, missiles instantly hit the duplicate of Little Bird. Yep, go ahead and roll damage. So, oh, oh, yes. that's Okay, so that's a four for the first one. So that's five. Then... So nine, then another four. Jesus, that, that was really good. Um, it's bad. So, uh, four, hang on, I can't count. 13, uh, 16, yeah. force damage. It's dead. You watch as these magic missiles, blood splats after every hit, come out the back and spray the wall and cover it. And the little bird clone goes, and just loses its form and turns into a pile of blood on the floor. So we're just going to move... Uh, would I be able to sort of move like around Captain and start making my way up that um, that walkway? So like 5, 10, 15, 15 20, 20, 20, 20, 25. 
in that area. Yeah. Because that goes all the way around. Yep, that's fine, yeah. Yep, it is now Clone Flint's turn. Flint around. is going to pull out his crossbow and aim at Gooey. I'm pretty sure he has disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah, he's threatened. Yeah. Uh, so that is, oh god. The lowest roll was 19. Uh, yeah, crack. well, all hit. A 15 and an 18. Oh, it only does three damage. So it fires this crossbow bolt, and as it's whizzing through the air, the blood peels off it, and it becomes a real crossbow bolt that whizzes past and cuts your, well, as cuts your arm. That was, what, three damage? Three damage. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. For the amazing rolls it had, man, it really didn't come to show it. That's <laughs> really low. Yeah. Is it's Captain... 1d8 plus 2. Oh, right. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, it Fair rolled enough. a 1. Fair enough. Not gonna question it. <laughs> uh, it's now Clone Kyrie's turn. Clone Kyrie is also going to ready its shield, and then it is going to swing at Little Bird. That would be an 18 to hit. Yeah, I think it hits. Yeah, strange that. 12 damage. That's fine. Clone Kari readies its shield, and as it does, pulls back with its other armor straight along your chest. Just before it makes contact, the blood peels away again to reveal, like, a real sword. Blint, what do you want to do, B? Uh, I'm going to go up to the uh, duplicate Flint. Mm -hmm. And with my, with my brand new sword, I am going uh, to... Oh, yeah, Lazarus. Yeah, get do that you, out. Where do you want to be? Um, I want to be in the diagonal. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that I'm somewhat blocking you, eh? Uh, that is a 14. Yeah, yeah that's a 14-year-old. No, that's a 3. <laughs> As you <laughs> swing the blade, the blue line along the center kind of flares and glows a bit as it makes contact and it just cuts along leaving behind like a almost like you know in animes where they swing a sword and there's like the trail your mm. sword now has like a blue trail along it when you swing it so mm. that took three off you said yeah but yes and then as a bonus action I'm gonna start dueling with it yeah I want to say you should have started dueling you fuck then looks at you and goes, Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> right, so that's the end of my turn. Little bird, what do you want to do, B? Um, I would like to move behind Blood Kyrie. Uh, okay. You would then have advantage on attack. Yes. Uh, I'm literally going to like that. That's a wall, that's on. I mean... Is it though? You'd be in the door at that point. That's fine. Okay. I mean, is they going to cause any problems? Is it a tuck of opportunity or? I don't think <sighs> I have no, because I I didn't move out of threatened range. No, no. I literally want to like move around. Yeah, it. plus a five foot square is pretty big. So yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay, uh, and then I'm just going to try and fucking stab it in the back. Yeah. Uh, so seven. Well, uh, 18. Hits. For 7. Damage. Uh, 7 damage, so that would take it down to... Uh, Matt. Yeah. As you attack it, it turns around to take the hit, like, in its leg. Rather than, like, in the chest or something. I'm just gonna keep fucking... Keep eyes on it, keep swinging, it's all good. Okay. Kyrie, your turn. Flash Kyrie. So, Kyrie is going to see that Captain is trying to fight Melee. Um, Kyrie's gonna run onto the space what Captain is and trying to knock them back. Onto like, the space that you're on? Uh, that no. Captain's on? Run onto the space what Captain's on and then push them back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then cast it like that. And then Kyrie will cast Guiding Bolt. Okay. So she'll close her eyes, 
start mumbling and probably mispronouncing <laughs> holy words and uh, cast G Guiding Bolt at Blood Captain. Okay. So okay. Range, roll for it. Oh, if it's ranged, you'll have disadvantage as well because yeah. you're in melee range. Range, melee range. range spell attack, yeah. yeah I'll do it anyways. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I rolled a two. Yeah, that doesn't hit. Kyrie goes to charge up the guiding bolt, and a like bright white almost spear appears in their hand. And as they throw it, it just veers upwards and goes off. Does it just keep going? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Someone's gonna be impaled like seven episodes later with just a mysterious <laughs> hole in their chest, and you're gonna be like, "Oh, I did that." Oh, that was me. Huey, what would you like do? Um, so I think if I use all of my movement, I can pretty much get in a straight line of where Captain of where Blood Captain is on the so I'm on the walkway there. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yes. Yeah, you're kind of on the edge a bit, so I'll count it as difficult terrain on that bit. Do you have okay. to stand, like, in the square, though? Because you're not standing in the middle of them? I can well, move like there. Yeah. 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 I, like I said, a five-foot square is relatively big, yeah. so... Okay. Like, Gooby is not five feet. <laughs> It's the first time I've ever done this. So, um, so deciding whether to use the rune stone or not, just kind of chucks it straight back into their chest, and Gooey sort of takes a hand and sort of reaches to the sky, and his hand, or their hand, suddenly extends into a giant spear, and I'm going to throw it and cast Gooey's corrosive spear at yeah! Captain Floodbright. <laughs> okay. I love Captain Floodbright. <laughs> I can't wait. All uh, right. Oh yeah, that hits with a twenty-three. <laughs> oh wow. yeah. That hits. All right. What? So so they take twelve acid damage to begin with as the spear impales them in the chest. Yep. And at the end of their next turn, they take more acid damage. You so watch, it just sticks in there. You watch as Gooey's hand turns into this spear. It starts fizzling, and. Almost like a symbiote from Spider-Man stretches out and just impales Blood Captain like in the stomach. And as Gooey pulls away, almost like a hard but still fizzling like tip of the shell is embedded within the stomach of this Blood Captain. It goes. That's my turn. Okay, I've been waiting for you to use that. Yeah, oh. I've been waiting for the time to use it. Clone Flint's turn. Clone Flint is going to attack Little Bird. Okay. With Lazarus, but like a blood clone Lazarus. But isn't Flint dueling? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's so... please hit me. It yeah. it means that Flint will have advantage on that next attack and deal extra damage. Yeah, it will. Twenty one. Yeah. That's another twelve damage. Cool. Oh. I'm gonna use my reaction. Okay. Uh, what's your reaction? Death Blossom. Oh, God. So, 20 feet around me, uh, there was a sphere of dark energy, and uh, everything in the radius needs to make a uh, wisdom saving throw. With a 20 foot, so 5, 10, 15, 20. And then we go, bop, 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 bop. So, that would be everyone here, apart yes. from Gooey. Everyone needs to make a uh, wisdom save. So... Kyrie's one critically failed. Good. And Captain's one has minus one wisdom. Got 15. I think that beats my save. Yeah. Isn't it 14 for your save 12. or something? Ah. Blood Kyrie takes 15. Flesh, uh, Blood Flint takes half. So do you want to round it up or down? Uh, we'll round it up. Eight. If Kyrie and Flint pass, they do not take anything. Okay, so both of you need to roll whiz throws. Uh, I got a seven. <laughs> well, you take 15 damage. Oh, god damn it, okay. I think. Oh, so is it, is it a fail, you, a pass, you don't take any? Well, yeah, it's a... uh, if the thing that attacked me is in the sphere, it takes 2d8 or half on, on a success. Everything else does a throw, but no damage on a success. So is it okay. a wisdom saving throw? Yes. Yeah. I'm really glad that I've got minus one on that. Uh, um, 
Seven minus one, six. Ooh. Akari also takes 15. My save is 12. How have you fucking failed that? Because You've done more harm one. than good here. That's not my fault. Okay, so yeah, that's your reaction, right? Yep. It is now Blood Kyrie's turn. Before that, okay. because it's the end of Bloodfoot's oh, yeah. turn, it takes an additional... Yeah. Oh my god, it takes an additional six acid damage. Oh. You watch as this uh, like hardened cone flattens out and expands more and burns away more of this thing's insides and just expands within the uh, Blood Captain. And it's now just like really feeling slow and sluggish. It's not doing great. It's going to use cure wounds on blood flint. It extra the sugar six health, and that's going to be Clan Kyrie's turn. So your acid damage was pretty much negated there. You dealt six. It uh, blood flint recovered six. It's fine. Flint, it's your go. Yeah, I'm going to... It's like a ledge that's right next to me, right? Yeah. Can I climb up that to get a better uh, vantage point? For ten of your movement? Sure, I'll let you um, f Fun fact, I have Rigging Monkey, which means uh, you gain a climb speed equal to your land speed. Okay, yeah. Uh, when... Base activity. Wild. Um, uh, your Death Blossom's gone now, right, Ashley? Yeah, it... it... It was at the, like, start of the next turn, basically. Uh, because I'm at a vantage point, does that mean that I can pretty easily use my crossbow at yep. the other me? Okay, cool. That is a like 15. That hits. And I'm getting... I oh, know I would get advantage on this, but that doesn't matter. Because mm -hmm. uh, You also hit. get an extra whatever it is I to attack. do, don't I? Give me a sec, I've got to roll a lot of dice. You could crit. <laughs> 3 plus 4 plus 2. As you fire this crossbow bolt, it goes through the skull of, um, or the skull of Blood Flint and comes out the other side and sticks next to Little Bird. And you watch as Blood Flint oh, 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 loses its form and splashes all over the floor. I did not want to see myself die today, but here we are. <laughs> cool. That's the end of my turn. Okay. Little Bird. I'm going to just fucking. Bleed and stab Kyrie. Okay. Blood Kyrie, not real Kyrie. <laughs> I've got to run off and start shanking. Is it still behind? 23. Yeah, you hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, fuck yeah, crit. Uh, 12 damage. Okay. You come down with your sword and, like, cleave into this Blood Kyrie's clavicle and down, and the arm with the shield kind of loses form and drops off uh, which means its shield is no longer readied and it is like barely holding its form together you can see it like almost like when gooey is particularly weak it's like struggling to keep a solid state Kyrie, it's your go Kyrie's gonna just sprint up to it and cleave it in the back okay advantage rate right? because it's behind uh yeah right I rolled a beautiful set of rolls, and I'm really glad that it's an advantage, because... So it's a crit. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Which Christ. is very forgiving. So, full roll would be... A 25 for attack. Um, and then for damage, 9, 18, 21. How do you want to do this? You make it up, DM. All right. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck as your you, roleplay. As you sprint over, you go to do like two handed wide sword swing. It's strange. It's like it turns a, the uh, blood monster turns around without actually turning around. Its features just kind of fade in and then appear out the other side. And as it's doing this, you cleave all the way through and just split this thing in half. And it looks at you, like, for a moment, and locks eyes with you, and then just dissipates and turns into, like, mulch again in the ground. You've done it! You killed the things! Ba -ba 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 you uh, successfully got into the dungeon! <laughs> so, looking into the dungeon, 
you see a long hallway with a single torch and then you just see a staircase that starts to wind down slowly and as you're looking down it's just jet black apart from a small light at the end that's where we're going to end this episode i hope you've enjoyed both players and listeners and we'll catch you all next monday